right, welcome everybody. I am so happy to be here. Uh, and I am really, really excited to talk a little bit more about the Calming Signals and Scent Work course uh, that we'll be offering this summer and fall. Um, and um, most of you know me, I'm Sarah Schlody. I'm a registered psychotherapist in Canada, uh, founder of Equisoma and co-founder of Equiscience. And I am here with my co-facilitator and I'll let her introduce herself. She is a fantastic, fantastic person. And, um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more today about her work and uh, our program as a whole. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. So nice to be here. I'm, um, I don't know if I pronounce on, on Dutch or English, but let's keep it simple with English. I'm Rachel Dreisma. And uh, I think most of you know me from my work with Calming Signals of Horses and Equine Scent Work. Lovely. Yes, which we have here. So yeah in yeah. terms of her books. They're really, really fantastic. Um, and I'm so pleased that she has uh, chosen to uh, agree to my request to, to partner up and do something. So, um, and maybe uh, to get us started, you can fill us in a little bit about um, what led you into this, into this work and a little bit about um, what you find most important or helpful about it in terms of helping uh, horses, in yeah. terms of uh, improving horse human communication and also equine enrichment. Yeah, I will. Well, yeah. I think uh, it is good to know that I started full time working with dogs and then later horses. And that was uh, over 20 years ago. And within that work with dogs, I found I was lacking a bit. When I started, the dominance theory was really, really um, well present. And if you would be a good leader, all problems would solve it's by itself. And now I'm, I'm a little bit generalizing, right? The positive reinforcement came up who said, like, if you have the best stake in the world, you will also be the winner. And here I was with that dog who was lying on the bed, underneath the bed for three months and only came out to pee or poo. And I thought that stake and that leadership will, will not work. And that really set me off on a path of, um, trying to find something that would benefit the animal by himself, the dog, to empower him to be curious, to start to feel joy in life and not be, let's say, involved or not involved, but not be the fear he was. And that led me to Turit Uga's work, but also the very, very big aim of being better in reading all the small signs the dogs give back then to see when I was approach, approaching the end of the comfort zone, when I was a little bit over, because obviously a, a dog or a horse that is very comfortable, very stressed, we all recognize, but I wanted to have those very, very small steps in between to really fine tune my communication and also my plans of working, working or inviting the animal. And I mean, I, I mentioned dogs, but horses were always part of my life, having owned horses and being at stables every day. So for me, it was very natural to go from dogs to horses. And having worked with a lot of dogs with challenges and knowing how beneficial exploration and scent work was, when looking at the life horses lead, I mean, they there can be so many high demands for them. And I thought they would just as much benefit from the scent work and the approach of um, fine tuning communication skills. So I changed it for the horses as well. Not changed it, but I tried to um, set in my experience with dogs and translate it to horses. Yeah. Lovely, right. And so we have the Calming Signals, which is the first book that you have that yeah. came out. Yeah. Um, and then the set work for horses, which sort of evolved out of, out of that. Out of first, that, yeah, for me, there are two pillars, pillars that make one because yeah. with the exploration you make, for instance, a horse courageous, but you need to look at the calming signals. You can do the calming signals and communicate with the horse without scent work or exploration. Obviously, that also works extremely well. But mm -hmm. I mean, I, I combine the both. Yeah, certainly. And yeah. I could see how both would be part of an overall uh, approach to being yeah. with horses in a different way dogs yeah. as well of course but since the course yeah. that we're going to be offering together is yeah, more absolutely. equine specific then yeah yeah um, yeah mm -hmm. and it's so exciting that we are going to offer it I mean I cannot tell you I mean from 
one out of three lectures, there's always one person who approaches me in the break and says, do you know Sarah Schloter's work? You really should <laughs> reach out to each other, that you complement each other very well. So it's so nice that it's finally happening. Yeah, I'm really grateful too. Yeah. And I know I've spoken so much about your work in my course programs as well yeah. independently, um, because for me, there's such an interesting crossover in terms of learning how to track the subtle signs of the nervous system yeah. that tell us wh which state is the animal in, which state are we in, how are we recognizing yeah. that within ourselves and how are we recognizing if we're over or under threshold yeah. um and then also like this idea of um enrichment which is another way of supporting a different experience for the nervous system especially yeah. if um a human nervous system or potentially an equine nervous system is pretty shut down yeah. um and what can we do to support um an animal and or a human to come out of a shutdown sort yeah. of helplessness defeated sort of place where they've gone yeah. inside themselves and the world is just too scary there's been too many things that are out of control yeah. you know back into like you were saying their curiosity and their natural yeah. orientation to yeah. sensory and relational awareness and Absolutely. and the parts of the brain that wake up through that kind of stimulation yeah. um and so for me when i was hearing you share and i i've had your books for some time uh, I was like, gosh, you know, this is such a natural complement yeah. to some of the stuff we talk about under this other category of trauma informed, yeah. trauma informed horse yeah, relationship. I can imagine, yeah. especially mm -hmm. because I have such a big library of films, hundreds and hundreds, so we can really pair up what you have and what I have with image yeah. imagery, yeah, and films. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that'll be lovely. So the course program yeah. that um, that we've dis that we've established. Um, is primarily a webinar series first. So three days of webinars uh, or a three-day webinar rather with us where yeah. we're looking at um, those calming signals, basically how to recognize signs of stress and appeasement um, in equines. Um, and we'll translate that too, I think, with human behavior as well, mm -hmm. because there's going to be the human component of that. We're all mammals. And yeah. so we all have versions of these behaviors. Um, and then recognizing those cues, uh, using that to help in convey a different kind of intentionality um, with the horses so that they have a different response from us when they engage yeah. in those behaviors yeah. or that we catch things before it gets to those points. Um, so it's a referencing sort of um, model yeah, absolutely yeah you know and then working also with the idea of scent work as a form of enrichment but also how does all of this support um healthier horse human relationships and possibly even to, at a larger degree trauma recovery broadly speaking if i were to yeah. put air quotes yeah. on that um yeah. and 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 why you know the trauma yeah. lens would be the piece that i'll be bringing absolutely. to our, yeah. our webinar series yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so i think uh i think a, a ideal mix of a lot of theory and a lot of practical work and not practical hands-on but practical looking at the films and yes. recognizing a lot from the films yeah yeah and seeing both your responses to what you're seeing as well so there's going to be what we're seeing in the videos yeah and also what is happening in your own nervous systems as well mm -hmm. which i think is such a crucial piece is bringing it back to you as the audience um yeah. and what are you noticing in your own body to start to hone your su su subtle awareness of the nuances within your own nervous system yeah. of what is emerging yeah. because it's it's a very intersubjective experience um and if yeah. we're thinking of this idea i think of dan siegel and his interpersonal neurobiology mm. um this is interspecies neurobiology in, in effect yeah. um playing out and so how do we recognize what's happening for you the observer um yeah. while we're watching these videos to help bring that attention yeah. in a very experiential way yeah. even though we're in a webinar format yeah and i mean especially also i mean giving away a bit now uh, if we talk about the practical days yes then that will be so so important like because if we're i mean we you, you you mentioned like the calming signals as a reference to look at various states of tension or yeah. comfort but you can really think if you want to communicate and give calming signals to horses how congruent are you with your own body and, yeah. and how does that work is your calming signal better not better does the horse respond differently i mean experimenting with that is also extremely important and so nice to do it is like learning a new language absolutely yeah. and i would say and it's the language of of 
nonverbal relationship. It's the language of yeah. the nervous system, right? Yeah. And so it's it's very much going to be practical in person. So these practical days are optional. So the yeah. webinar series is standalone. You can register for our three-day webinar and just take that. Um, for those of you who are interested in seeing us in person, we'll be at different locations uh, in that will allow us to meet up with a small group of students um, and work with you over two days to play around with calming yeah. signals, recognizing states of your nervous system, what's going on for the horse, what's going on for you in response to these um, calming signals or yeah. appeasement signals, and then also playing around a little bit with some scent work enrichment yeah. and seeing yeah. the impact um, relationally and in terms of uh, nervous system shifts uh, yeah. on both you and the equines at these particular facilities. So I'm already um, so looking forward to it, though. Me too. Yeah, I'm really, yeah, really wonderful. looking forward to it. Yeah. So what I would say is if you're interested in learning more, come check out the website. So everything is located at equiscience.com. Um, those of you who already know about Equiscience know that that's a website where most of my uh, workshops are run with Dr. Steve Peters, and we sometimes have guest uh, presenters come. And so we're so excited to have um, this opportunity for um, for an additional yeah. guest presenter. So check out equiscience.com. The direct link to the webinar and seminar series uh, will be there. Um, and you can, again, register for the webinar without registering for the in-person seminar uh, with both of us teaching together, um, bringing our respective realms of expertise together. So we look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.